Can you hear that? I'm sure we can like get like some kind of software, but I don't think like built into Teams like recording wise. Got it. Okay, we are recording. Fantastic. Okay, we'll begin. So welcome everyone. Thanks for listening in to our hazard mitigation kickoff meeting. And we'll begin with some introductions. We'll start off with our Federal Emergency Management Agency or FEMA representative for today, Emily. Thanks, Kelsey. Uh, my name is Emily Baumgartner. I'm a Senior Grants Management Specialist with FEMA Region 9's Mitigation Division. Looking forward to um, the next 20, 30 minutes or so. Thanks, Emily. And next, we'll start off with our HIEMA Hazard Mitigation Team. We'll start off with Colin. Aloha, everyone. My name is Colin Ford, and I'm on the Hazard Mitigation Team with Kelsey. Uh, we're looking forward to getting to know everyone, and hopefully you guys find this uh, presentation helpful. Thank you. And then I'll just jump in here really fast before we kick it off to Ethan, Skyler, and Dean. So hi, everyone. I'm Kelsey Amanaka, the State Hazard Mitigation Officer for HIEMA. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ethan. I'm a Mitigation Planner with HIEMA, and I really hope you find this video informative. Hi, everyone. I'm Skyler Suiso. I'm a Grants Management Specialist with HIEMA. Thank you. And aloha, my name is Dean Guzman. I'm also a mitigation planner with HIEMA. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Next slide. Okay, we're gonna go over some things today. Our Common acronyms for today will be HMGP, Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, sometimes referred to as 404 or 404 grant. And of course, HMP, which is Hazard Mitigation Plan. And we're going to learn what the BCA is, is that benefit cost analysis, along with our EHP, Environmental and Historic Preservation and also to include the NOI, which is a notice of intent. Now, today's learning objectives are, we're gonna learn what mitigation is and why investing in it is critical. We're also gonna provide an overview of the HMGP basics, along with, we're gonna revisit the DR 4724HI Hazard Mitigation Grant Program funding opportunity. And as well as we're going to learn about upcoming deadlines and engagement opportunities. All right. Um, thanks, Dean, for the um, the the acronyms and the learning objectives, I'm going to help kick off today's webinar by providing a brief overview of what mitigation is in the context of emergency management um, and FEMA's mitigation grant programs, as well as why investing in mitigation is critical. Next slide, please. All right, so before we dive in too far, we wanted to provide a common understanding of the difference between preparedness and mitigation. These terms are often used interchangeably, which is understandable. Sometimes there really are blurred lines between preparedness and mitigation activities. Uh, but to differentiate between these two phases of the emergency management cycle, it's helpful to think of them in the context of an actual hazard event or disaster. Preparedness actions are um, those that help ready a community to better respond to a disaster and minimize the impact. This could include creating and exercising local emergency plans, creating a disaster kit for your home or office, or even a community purchasing a new fire engine or a police command vehicle. These actions don't prevent the disaster from happening, but they do help make sure that communities are ready to respond and react to natural hazards. On the other hand, mitigation actions aim to disrupt the disaster cycle um, and eliminate the risk to life, property, and infrastructure. 
So for example, a homeowner in a flood prone area could elevate their home so that the flood waters go underneath their home rather than through it, eliminating the risk to life and property altogether. Next slide, please. All right, as I just mentioned, mitigation actions aim to disrupt the disaster cycle. To do that, we're looking for sustained actions that reduce or eliminate the long-term risk to human life and property. For example, putting sandbags out to reduce the flood risk um, from a storm is not a permanent or sustained solution. A long-term solution would be to increase the capacity of a storm drain system to reduce the risk of localized flooding. These key terms on the screen were pulled directly from Hawaii's state hazard mitigation plan, and there'll be more on that plan and how it relates to FEMA's mitigation, hazard mitigation grant program later in the presentation. Next slide, please. All right, so hazard mitigation is important for so many reasons. Not only can it help save lives, um, but it helps reduce the need for response and speeds up recovery after a disaster. Hazard mitigation can also help keep critical facilities operating after disaster so they can continue to provide those important government functions after disaster. And if those weren't reasons enough, investing in hazard mitigation is also proven to save communities money in the long run. The National Institute of Building Sciences put together this chart on the bottom right hand of your screen, um, estimating returns on investment for different hazards according to different mitigation strategies. So across the board, the lesson is the same. Mitigation will save you money over time. I'm gonna next slide and hand it over to Colin. Aloha, everyone. My name is Colin Ford. As I mentioned, I'm on the hazard mitigation team, and here we'll go over an overview of hazard mitigation. So next slide, please. So here are the basic requirements for an HMGP project. So first, the project must align with either the county or state hazard mitigation plan. Um, it's a reimbursement grant, and there is non-federal cost share uh, component of this. So although federal funds will pay for a significant portion of the project, it's important for the subrecipient to have cash on hand. Additionally, the period of performance is 48 months. Now, this is a little change from some of the legacy HMGP projects, so just make note of that, 48 months. Additionally, it must be cost effective and it must adhere to all EHP regulations. And very important to note, there could be no groundbreaking before FEMA approval. Next slide, please. So hazard mitigation plans. So the state and each county have their own hazard mitigation plan with their own mitigation strategies, goals, objectives, and actions. Your HMGP project must align with what is in your county or the state HMP. Now, if you have any questions about any of the counties or state plans, you can find links to all five plans in Hyema's HM website. Next slide, please. All right, it's also important to keep in mind that this is a reimbursement grant, meaning that the subrecipient will be responsible for fronting the funds for their project. Typically, the subrecipient will pay the invoices and then submit uh, reimbursement request packages to Hyema. Next slide, please. And here's some key things to remember. Uh, one, damage is likely from any natural event, not just declared events. Funds can be used in the declared disaster area and can be used on private property under certain conditions. And finally, the project cannot be eligible under any other federal program. If you have any questions about uh, anything I just said, feel free to reach out to us and we can clarify further. Next slide, please. Okay, so the main point here is to mention 406 mitigation can be used to complement and enhance HMGP or as we mentioned before, 404. This is only open to Maui County for the 4724 HMGP. So it's important to note that you may use both PA mitigation and HMGP mitigation funds to implement mitigation measures on the same facility, but not for the same work. These grants, Public Assistance Hazard Mitigation 406 and Hazard Mitigation Grant Program 404 are funded by the same agency, but they are managed independently, even though they are related. Again, if you have further questions about uh, what these projects may look like, feel free to reach out to us and we'd love to send you some examples. Next slide, please. And here we have FEMA's HMP guidance. This document has all HMA program guidance, one of them being HMGP. 
It's Hyema and FEMA's go-to document when we're researching uh, programmatic requirements. It's quite long, so let us know if there's anything you need to find specifically in there, and we'd be more than happy to point you in the right direction. Next slide, please. And now I'll be handing over to Kelsey. Thanks, Colin. All right, now we'll dive into some specifics for this 4724 Hazard Mitigation Grant Program Opportunity. So just again to reiterate, we will be talking about the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program that was unlocked from the Maui wildfires. This program um, was again um, triggered from the Maui wildfires that happened last August in 2023. So this is also known as 404, as um, some of my colleagues have previously mentioned. Funds don't have to benefit the disaster declared area or even facilities that were damaged from the Maui wildfires. This is a statewide opportunity. Projects can um, incorporate private property under certain conditions, such as um, residential retrofit programs. So this program can fund um, projects for retrofitting private homes, but that must be on a voluntary basis. And projects cannot be funded under any other federal program. So this is really important to keep in mind. The only federal funds that turn into state or county funds is the Community Development Block Grant or CDBG program. So that is the only federal funds that can be matched with the Hazard Mitigation Grant program. Okay, so this is a high level um, kind of timeline of how the this specific has a mitigation grant program funding opportunity came to be. The damages were assessed and evaluated on Maui. The uh, um, a presidential major disaster declaration was declared, triggering the public assistance and individual assistance recovery grant programs from FEMA. And the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program receives 15% of what PA and IA spend. And then finally, those funds are allocated to Hawaii specifically. Okay, here are Governor Green's six funding priorities for this specific opportunity. And I'll um, leave it to the uh, Ethan who will dive deeper into what these six funding priorities are. Okay, so to hit on just some eligible project categories under the Hazard Mitigation Grants Program, we can fund wildfire mitigation, um, we can do wind retrofit projects, so making sure that your doors, windows, roofs are all protected and resistant against high winds, making sure you have a continuous load path from floor to ceiling. We can do energy resilience, so funding backup generators, um, microgrids. We can even do flood mitigation acquisitions. We can do um, dry flood proofing or floodplain and stream restoration. We can also do erosion or sediment control. If you experience landslides, we can help um, with soil stabilization. We can do um, engineering with nature. So all of those nature based solutions really excited that FEMA has incorporated more nature based solution opportunities into this housing mitigation grant program. So we can fund now coral reef restoration projects. We can do seismic retrofits, which are very important in Hawaii County, and we can also fund community planning efforts and capability and capacity building. And if you need some inspiration or you want to look at some previously funded projects, take a look at FEMA's mitigation action portfolio. It is 107 pages long, but it's filled with some great ideas. And we do acknowledge that we're Hawaii. We're not on the continental US, so not every project that is funded or implemented on uh, the mainland is applicable or even the best uh, solution for Hawaii. But this is a great place to start and a great place to see what kinds of projects were funded. 
Next up, we'll go into some different project types for the hazard mitigation grant program. So there's a 5% state initiative, a 5% building code initiative, 7% planning, regular projects, and advanced assistance. So those percentages, the 5% and the 7% is taken from the total eligible funding ceiling. So 5% of the total um, hazard mitigation grant program opportunity can be pushed towards state initiative or building code initiative and same with 7% planning. So to go into more detail about the 5% state initiative, these projects are usually ones that have a difficult time getting a passing benefit cost ratio or BCR using FEMA's benefit cost analysis or BCA toolkit. So these can be projects like studies or um, outreach projects. Next up is the advanced assistance. So this is great if you know you have a mitigation opportunity, you know you want to mitigate against one or even better, multiple hazards, but you're not exactly sure what you want to do. You're not sure what is your best option that you should choose. This is an opportunity to go in for an advanced assistance project, understand all of your mitigation needs, and then choose which option is the best one for you. You can even um, implement some work that you need to develop a full mitigation application. And then going into regular projects, also referred to as construction projects. So these are um, projects that you know what you want to do, you're ready for construction, you're ready for implementation, and you just need um, that extra money. Uh, this is a great opportunity to go in for those really large construction opportunities. And then kind of to merge an advanced assistance with a regular project, this is called a phase project. So phase one will be doing the design and specs. Phase two will be the construction or implementation of the deliverables of phase one. So this is when you know you have a mitigation opportunity, you know exactly what hazards or hazard you want to mitigate against, but you just don't have those designs. You don't have those technical studies done yet, but you are very committed to implementing and executing the construction portion. Phase projects are a really good opportunity if that sounds like where you are at. And then maintenance requirements. Unfortunately, this funding opportunity does not cover maintenance. We don't cover deferred maintenance either, but FEMA just wants to know that you're maintaining the project and you're, you're um, fulfilling the project's the useful life with these funds. So again, to reiterate some project eligibility, your project must be in either the state or county hazard mitigation plan. It cannot duplicate efforts or other funding sources except for the Community Development Block Grant or CDBG. It must, um, it doesn't have to benefit the disaster area, but it could. This is a statewide opportunity. It needs to implement long-term solutions. So what Emily spoke about earlier, mitigation is for those long-term solutions. We don't fund Band-Aid fixes. It can be packaged with some um, other programs like Colin alluded to. It can be paired with um, the 406 mitigation. It must be cost effective. It must adhere to all environmental requirements and it must adhere to all um, Code of Federal Regulations. Okay, so touching more on the benefit cost analysis. This might be a daunting task for you. The FEMA's Benefit Cost Analysis Toolkit can be a little confusing, but please don't stress, don't worry. That's why we are here. That's why HIEMA, our Tidal Basin partners and FEMA are here to help to provide technical assistance. Um, some of you may know Judith from the Tidal Basin family. She is the BCA queen. 
So really glad to have her on the team for this opportunity since if there's a way to get a passing benefit cost analysis, then she's the one to do it. And next, just want to highlight, as you can see, there are a lot of environmental and historical preservation regulations that must be adhered to. So we are Region 9, we are Hawaii, we need to make sure that we're protecting our endangered species here. So we will also provide technical assistance to make sure that you provide all of the um, required EHP information in your application. So FEMA has all of the information they have to check on their requirements. Okay, so the application process is a little lengthy. It is a lot of work. We do have a template that will prompt you to provide us with all of the information FEMA looks for when they review. So just to highlight some of the minimum project um, areas in our application, of course, the name, your contact information, the location of the project, um, the scope of work, that is a huge component. Making sure that the project is cost effective, your work schedule or timeline, justification um, for selection, alternative um, options considered. We want to make sure that you've considered all of the options in this mitigation project, and we want to make sure the project selected is the best one for your situation. It must provide environmental and historical preservation information, and we must have a budget or a cost estimate. And these are just some high level areas that we include in our application, but there are some other additional components such as maps or flood maps of your project area. Okay, so going into the sub applicant responsibilities, you're ultimately responsible of developing the sub application, but of course, Haima and Tidal Basin are here to support with that. You need to make sure that you implement the best practices in accordance with eligibility criteria, that you execute your project on schedule to the best of your ability, manage public information needs, provide um, the local cost share. And right now it is a 75% federal share to 25% non-federal share match. Meaning that if you have a project that is $100, FEMA can provide the $75 and the sub applicant is responsible for providing the remaining $25. You need to make sure that you manage your project and um, all of the funds that FEMA allocates. Submit quarterly reports to HIEMA, and we do have a template for that. So um, we hope to make that process a little easier for those sub recipients. And make sure that you're pre prepared for any audits in the future. Moving on to HIEMA's responsibilities. It's our job to develop the mitigation strategy for this opportunity. The governor actually set the funding priorities. We identify potential sub applicants. So that's any county, state, department, or agency and certain private nonprofits. We assist with any environmental or floodplain management reviews, also in partnership with the Department of Land and Natural Resources. The state has a mitigation form, will prioritize all of the submitted notices of intents or projects. We'll provide technical assistance. We'll monitor the approved projects once awarded. We'll ensure that all audit and administrative requirements that the grant mandates are followed. Then we submit quarterly reports to FEMA based on the information we receive from all of these sub recipients. We also approve any cost overruns. So if you're over budget, um, we need to know that and communicate that up to FEMA. And we also review and recommend or deny any extension requests to FEMA. And next, I'll pass it over to Emily, who will go over the FEMA responsibilities. Thanks, Kelsey. So FEMA's role in the hazard mitigation grant program is essentially threefold. 
Uh, we support Haima as the recipient of this funding opportunity in establishing their hazard mitigation grant programs, so participating in webinars like these. We review all submitted project sub-applications and amendment requests to ensure the application or request meets all the programmatic requirements, um, including compliance with environmental and historic preservation laws and executive orders. And then throughout the, the project life cycle, the grant life cycle, we monitor and evaluate um, all the way through project closeout. Thanks. Sorry, you're muted. Thank you so much. Trying again. So just to reiterate, this funding opportunity is open statewide. It's open to any state and county department and agencies and certain private nonprofits. And again, just to reiterate, this hazard mitigation grant program does have a period of performance of four years. So that is a change from some of the previous legacy hazard mitigation grant programs. So this opportunity is four years. And next up, I'll pass it over to Skylar. Hi, everyone. So we're going to go into the deadlines for um, getting your notice of intent in for uh, possible funding. Uh, submitting a notice of intent is the first step in applying for this hazard mitigation grant program. It's similar to a project proposal, and HIEMA uses the NOI to ensure that we have enough projects to use the full HMG, HMGP amount and have information to determine your project eligibility. Uh, the NOI has about 31 questions, and some of the funding categories include what hazards are you mitigating against, project description, project benefiting area or community, expected benefits for the BCA, EHP, estimated project cost, work schedule, and cost share. If anyone has questions on the NOI or needs help filling out the NOI, please reach out to either me or Ethan. Uh, reminders are the NOI is due August 1st, and the link is available on our HIEMA HMGP website. The governor released his six funding priorities for this HMGP opportunity, and that includes projects that improve the resilience of critical facilities and critical infrastructure, such as ports and harbors and lifelines, projects that benefit underserved populations, individuals with access and functional needs, and communities disproportionately impacted by disasters and climate change, projects benefiting the declared disaster area, projects that increase shelter space and or capabilities and capacity, projects that mitigate multiple hazards, and projects that mitigate wildfires. Next, I'll hand it over to Ethan. Thank you, Skylar. Um, what we can see here is a visualiz visualization of our current um, HMG application process. As you can see, we are still very early in the application process. We are still on our NOI step. As Scholar had mentioned, uh, NOIs are due on August 1st. Um, they are a very important step in the application process because that allows you to reserve a spot to access a portion of the grant. It's also very non-committal and your application can be edited. So don't be afraid to get something in or put anything out there because you can withdraw without penalties and you can always fix mistakes by working with us. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as far as consulting us, uh, we have a weekly NOI office hour every single Thursday from 1 to 3. Um, we can answer any questions you have, we can workshop your application, and we can generally make sure your application is the best that it can be to make sure you get the resources you need. Uh, next slide, please. So as you can see here, this is not a short grant cycle. It starts all the way in 2023 and uh, we are projected to end in 2029. That being said, this is just a projection. 
Uh, we cannot guarantee how long this will take. It may be shorter. It may be longer. There are always complications. So it, it's good to hope the best, but prepare for the worst. So um, while this is a great source to go by, um, please always stay up to date, stay in contact with us, make sure you have um, the most up-to-date information because this will almost certainly change. Uh, next slide, please. Um, that being said, since this is such a long process, um, it's important that we all work together. Um, Haima, FEMA, you, the sub-applicant, we're all working towards the same goal of making Hawaii a better, safer place. So we have to make sure that we are there to support each other, uh, lift each other up, and by extension, uh, lift Hawaii up. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as mentioned prior, we have the office hours um, upcoming. We will have links and resources for you to reach out to, to um, other organizations to help your sub-application. If you can go to that real quick, please. Uh, that's this right here. Feel free to pause the video and get this information down. Additionally, um, next slide, please. We have Hyema's leadership. You've already heard from our resident state hazard mitigation officer, Kelsey, um, on the specifics of this application, but both Administrator, Administrator Barros and our executive officer, Don Awu, will be more than happy to work with you and make sure your grant is the best that can be. Next slide, please. And if you have any additional questions, um, please feel free to call us or send us an email. We are always happy to respond and help you out. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, well that concludes our Hazard Mitigation Grant Program 101 meeting. And I'd like to thank Emily and her FEMA family for collaborating with HIEMA Mitigation on presenting this webinar. And please feel free to reach out to us, go back and get our contact information if you want those uh, office hours that we have every Tuesdays, or if you just have a general question. With that, mahalo and aloha.